Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 29th episode of your new favorite internet show, VisionCon Live. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, but you didn't come here to see me today. You came. See yes. woman the hour. She's Bulbasaur from Pokemon, Mokuba from Yu-Gi-Oh!, Biscuit Kruger from Hunter x Hunter, just to name a few. She's the legend that the industry just would not be the same without. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one, the only, Tara Sands. Tara, how are oh, you doing today? Way too kind. Oh. Um, oh. No, give yourself some credit My there. ego's just going to be out of control <laughs> after this. Well, it deserves to be. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you just tuning in and missed the pre-show, I talked a little bit about the fact that that intro will no longer be after this episode. We're going to have to figure out a new intro. It's no longer your new favorite internet show, because after episode 30, which is next week, it's not really new anymore. So we'll figure out a new intro, but I did just want to give some credit and a swan song to the intro that's got us so far. But with that out of the way, Tara. What's up? My first Hi. question for you is, how did we get here? Now, as I mentioned, you're a legend in your field, you know, a household name in the industry, <laughs> but was acting and voice acting always the case, always the plan growing up, or much like a superhero origin story? Did something happen that kind of led you down? Yeah, I got bit by a, uh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew I wanted to do something in this industry. I never, you know, until I auditioned for it, I never thought of a voiceover as a job, you know. Uh, but I was always doing theater, and, and I knew that I wanted to be in this world. I just didn't know that I'd be in a windowless booth <laughs> most of the time. Um, but I love it, and I, I kind of fell into it, um, you know, by doing, by being a singer and, and doing all that stuff. Uh, voice server was just one of the things I was doing, and it ended up being what stuck. So, so, so very what, lucky. What was kind of the first big uh, kicking off point as far as, you know, role is concerned? Like, you're, you're, the role that you kind of consider your first big break? Um, well, with anime... I mean, I told this story before, so tune out if you've heard it, but um, I won't be upset. Uh, so my first anime job was Pokemon. I just, again, and, and we didn't know it was a big deal. We, I knew about Pokemon as being a show that gave kids, kids seizures in Japan. <laughs> it was like, okay, good luck with that. Um, and I went in that day to play a character named Melanie. And while I was there, they were like, hey, try voicing this little blue greenish thing and this little round blue. Th so it was, those ended up obviously being bigger role, you know, Bulbasaur and Oddish were bigger roles than Melanie. Um, but we, we didn't know that. I didn't know that. Like there was no, it was all just this happy accident, which I think was probably the best way for it to happen because there was, there was no pressure on me like, oh, if I don't do a good job with this, this is a, a role I'm going to play for eight, you know, eight seasons or whatever it was. So it was probably the best way to go into it. It was very, just super lucky. Well, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it's interesting that, you know, you guys never expected Pokemon to kick off because, you know, in anime, and again, guys, I'm kind of bang, painting with a broad brush, but, you know, unless you grew up like myself in the Toonami area or era, you know, anime, at least in the West, a lot of fans of anime now kind of got introduced to it later in life, you know, again, unless you kind of grew up in the tsunami era. That said, aside from two shows, both of which you're actually in, and that would be Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! They were definitely geared a lot towards, you know, a younger audience in the West, as well as obviously overseas as well. But I do want to ask a question that's probably on everybody's mind, because you voice a lot more than just Bulbasaur. You voice countless Pokemon. What are a couple of your favorites? You want to see my cheat sheet? Oh, I just have, I have to have it here for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> Some behind the scenes. I dig it. What is, oh, that's my straw in the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I, because people were like asking me. So finally, and then I even had it wrong on there and had to switch it. Like, oh, no. tell me that it was wrong. Uh, because we didn't, you know, we, you're, we didn't keep track. There was no IMDb. Sure. I had a list somewhere that I've since lost, but like we really didn't even think to keep track of this stuff. Sure. But so, were, was Bulbasaur and Oddish kind of your two favorites, or were there some that don't exactly get as much credit as you think uh, they deserve? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Like, they're my favorites in certain ways, but they weren't the most, like, Bulbasaur is really hard on my throat. So, really? 
for that reason, yeah, it's like scratchy, you know. Ah, okay. Um, so you know, when I got to do things like Teddy Ursa, like that was great. That was a walk in the park. And you know, he wasn't screaming a lot or so we came at it from like a voice actor standpoint. Like some of our favorite stuff was like, oh, I got to show more emotion in this. It might not be the biggest character or this this is a really fun voice to do. So we were looking at it. And again, like I wasn't watching the show necessarily. Like it wasn't, because I, you know, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm on this kid show. Like I didn't, you know, I was in it. So it didn't appeal to me in that way. And now it's more fun to go back and be like, oh, wow, what an amazing lesson. And you know, there were times we'd flip through that script so fast, I would have no idea what it was about, you know? <laughs> like, so now it's kind of fun to relive it all through you guys. Sure, 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 sure. And like, did you ever expect, obviously you guys didn't expect it to blow up this big, but how big of an impact has that had on your career, kind of, you know, even now? It's weird. I mean, look, at the time, I was just happy that my little cousins <laughs> thought I was cool. I was like, okay, you know, that's like a badge of honor that like kids think I'm cool. Sure. Um, and, you know, I was living in New York where there wasn't a huge animation industry. Uh, so it didn't, it, you know, it helped me get more anime jobs, which was great. Um, but I had to, you know, eventually move to Los Angeles to, to do other stuff. And um, it, it, it's like a great conversation piece. Like it definitely is helpful. And in terms of like getting to conventions and meeting fans, and it's awesome for all of that. Um, I don't think it's like, launched me into like yeah. other certain group but it's, it's amazing it's an amazing talking point because once someone knows about that they always have some kind of story sure. you know so it's an icebreaker it's easy to talk you know especially with little kids you know I can you know do funny voices for them and make them sure. smile and that's that's a big deal <laughs> yeah I mean Bulbasaur is a perfect icebreaker but uh also, also another show that I just mentioned I didn't actually want to touch on touch on now, Yu-Gi-Oh, obviously, you know, massively world-renowned show and card game. And you play a character that I personally don't think gets enough credit because he is related to one of the main, I hesitate to call him a protagonist, uh, but, you know, Seto Kaiba, which, in my opinion... He's complicated. He's very complicated, you know. I mean, I would have said jerk, but we'll go with complicated. But the one big redeeming quality about him is he loves his brother, which is voiced by you, Mokuba. So kind of, how was uh, getting the role as Mokuba and kind of, are there any fun, like little side stories involved with kind of voicing Mokuba? I don't even remember if I auditioned. I'm sure I did. Sure. But you have to understand, so Four, four Kids was, was like an anime factory at that right. time. So we were always, you know, if you were one of, I, I feel like there were probably less than 50 of us that did everything back then. Um, so if you were there, they'd pull you into booth and be like, audition for this, read for this. It was all happening very quickly. Um, you also didn't know like what was going to necessarily be a big role or, so it was all just very strange. So I'm sure that audition was just, I read, I was like, all right, cool. What, you know, I don't, probably didn't even think about it much. Um, which is so sad in retrospect, because now I'm like, oh, I wish I had been like, dear diary, today I auditioned to be Mocha Bakaiba. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wish, the, the fun thing really was being around four kids at that time, because it was just this creative playground for us to, you know, go from studio to studio and we did a lot of shows no one ever saw. Uh, I mean, those are some of the really fun ones. Like someone brought up that show Funky Cops the other day that we dubbed. I don't know if any, you know, five people saw that. Um, there were, and there were pilots we did that no one ever saw. I realized we did a version of Ultraman at one point, maybe not at four kids, but like there was just, there was an anime boom. So we were, I mean, lucky to be working so much, but everything kind of blurred together. Because again, we, rarely saw a full script. We never got scripts ahead of time. We'd run in, record our lines. They paid us by the hour. They wanted us out. So I, I, I don't know half of the plots, which is so sad. Well, I, if you were the lead, you knew the plots. But if you weren't... <laughs> well, it was definitely an anime renaissance. And, you know, as wonderful as that is, I mean, I can certainly see how, you know, all of that would have blurred around because you guys were just, you know, one off, like just, you know, one after the other. It was bananas. And I mean, literally, it'd show up be like, okay, Mokuba got kidnapped again? All right. <laughs> cool. Um, 
So, but it was, again, it was really fun because our friends then would become our directors and it's, it was, I remember the time around it so much more than the actual work because you remember like the friendships you made or the, you know, it's like, you might not remember what you learned in history class, but you remember who sat next to you. Like it's, it was that kind of thing. Well, it's interesting that you say friendships because I do have a bit of a confession to give uh, both you and everybody watching right now. Um, uh, one friendship in particular, uh, a previous guest that we had on the show was called Megan Hollingshead. Who's that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard of her. Oh my gosh, that would have killed the whole joke. But now, oh, because, so she was kind enough to uh, share her episode on Instagram. And I was super stoked. I was like, oh my God, recognition. But I'm scrolling down the people who liked and I see a name, Tara Sands. I'm like, huh. So I go and I email you and, you know, off you'd be on the show. And oh my God, you said yes. And so, you know, I have a little bit of a thank you to Megan for that as well. Oh, she's the oh. best. Oh my God. Well, yeah, I mean, you both are, but. I did send her a package yesterday. So we go for our birthdays. We have birthdays like the same week. And um, we usually go to a restaurant called Rayo's for our right. birthday in LA. And uh, we could, obviously could not go this year. Um, pandemic and so I sent her <laughs> from Target a box of all these different Rayo's sauces and I you know addressed the box to nurse Megan Megan's Hollinghead because that's what I call her so she got that yesterday. <laughs> oh but yeah God. I mean honestly it's the, the this job really did create is responsible for so many of my great friendships and I'm very grateful for that. That is so cute uh well I did <laughs> Before we got into nitty gritty about, you know, voice acting, acting, a lot of other things, there was one more character I did want to highlight. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one that's kind of a near and dear to me because it is a big character from a show that I'll be honest, until this whole, you know, we had all this free time, I didn't really care about. And that's uh, Hunter x Hunter. Um, oh. Now, or Hunter Hunter, as uh, many say it. I've been uh, taught that it's Hunter Hunter. I it is it Hunter Hunter. Okay, yeah, I always get laughed at when I call it Hunter x Hunter. Yeah. But, yeah, who cares? There's an X in there. Why wouldn't you exactly. say that? Exactly. Well, anyway, but uh, Biscuit Kruger, you know, she's as terrifying as she is adorable. And I did want to ask, you know, if there were any fun stories behind that character as well. But that also leaps into uh, my next question following that, where do you find that any of the roles that you've had throughout the years and, you know, moving forward, you either gave a bit of yourself in those characters or some of the, some of the characterization that they underwent, you underwent as well? I mean, it definitely happens. I think a lot of the time it's just accidental. It's you're just bringing your life experience or whoever you are to that role because it just happens. If you have a trained actor, that's just sort of your, your, if you're in touch with you, it just sort of comes out. I mean, I loved Biscuit specifically. I loved her relationship with the kids. I just felt like she was so, you know, it was so tough love. She reminded me a lot of Anna from Shaman King in that way. It was like tough love for their own good, you know, funny way of showing it. Sure. But you knew at the end of the day, she really meant well. And you never doubted her motives. You always, you know, all right, that's a, that might be harsh. Um, but then she was so sensitive too. Like she had that sense, like, don't call me old and all those things like that. I mean, we all feel like that sometimes. So all of that, obviously you internalize and you're like, hey, yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think her relationship with the kids was really, I thought was special. And, you know, being a mentor, I, I don't know that I've been a mentor, but that's, I feel like I love the way she did it. I loved that it wasn't all um, sweet and <laughs> coddling because that's not what they needed. Well, I, I don't know about you question being a mentor or not. When we announced your appearance on the show, I mean, you know, we got story after story of like people messaging, which actually this is actually a perfect opportunity. What? Uh, now I'm people what? as message VisionCon saying how much, you know, you've impacted their lives, how much big fans they are, which if you guys haven't already done so, we're about, uh, we're approaching the halfway point. So I do want to mention that if you guys haven't already either messaged VisionCon directly or commented on the live chat, anything you want to either tell Tara or ask her, at the end of this, we're going to go to viewers, comments, and questions, and I'll read those off to you guys, but we keep still have clean. plenty of time. No. What's up? I said keep it clean, but I don't really care. Oh. Yeah. Well, we've got Marissa <laughs> Pence, the wind beneath my sails, monitoring the chat, hanging out with you guys, 
and you know making sure you guys keep it clean so you know <laughs> you guys don't worry but uh the next thing i wanted to talk about we've talked a lot about anime and cartoons but you do a lot of other things uh as well and one of the big things is and i read this while i did was you know doing further research on you you do a lot of narrations for audiobooks and i read somewhere it, you did like over 200 which blows well, my mind. Over many, it's over many years. Let's, you know, it wasn't all like I just can't, I just can't think of anything I've done 200 anything of. So it's pretty I, crazy. Yeah. I did want to ask, are there any unique challenges between, you know, voicing, you know, characters in anime and cartoons versus narrating audiobooks? But, I mean, I think the big thing is kind of being fearless. Uh, I, when you do an audiobook, you're playing, you know, if you're the only narrator, you're doing every role. And because you're doing that, you know, I'm doing the old man, I'm being the 10 year old kid, I'm being, you know, everybody, every race, every age, you know, every Martian, every, so I, because I've done those books, it freed me up when I'm in the booth doing anime that if someone says, hey, can you uh, do this three line part and be this? I'm, uh, yeah, sure. Like, I just have, you develop more of a bag of tricks, I think, because you're playing, you know, I wish I had a, an example here, but literally when I, do a new audiobook, I make a list of all the characters and there's over 50 sometimes. It can be from, you know, random security guard who yells something. And of course they sometimes sound the same. I can't, you know, I'm not a magician, but I try to make them all as different as I can. And that absolutely 100% helps in the booth. It gives you uh, more confidence, I'd say. It's, audiobooks are the hardest job I do, for sh hands down. Really? Is it, is it because there's so many characters you need to keep track of and it's just you most often? Yeah, and it's stamina. You know, you're working a full day of, you know, if you go to a voiceover session, if it's, I mean, a four hour session doing anime would be a long session yeah. because it's a lot, you know, but a, an audiobook day is a six hour day usually of just you talking to your, and we self direct those for the most part. Um, we're self, you know, if I record at home, I'm editing, I'm directing myself. I'm, <laughs> So it's, and then I'm looking up, you know, all of a sudden there'll be a pronunciation. So I'm also researching, we're wearing every hat when we do that. So it's, it's definitely much more difficult than when I get to do an anime session. I'm so excited to have a director tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little bit of that pressure off you. Yeah. Well, you, you brought up a good point, actually. Uh, how do you, you know, kind of retain that stamina, especially during these long recordings? And, you know, over the years, you know, I'm sure you've, built up a tolerance, but are there any kind of tips or tidbits that you'd give that uh, kind of help preserve your voice? Yeah. I'm the worst person to ask that because I'm, I'm not <laughs> the best. But yeah, I mean, listen, when I have like days that I know I have full sessions or really busy days, I don't, you know, obviously there's nothing, nowhere to go now, but you know, I'd make sure I didn't have any plans that night. If I, because, or I, you know, I know which restaurants are allowed because I don't want to yell. So if someone says, hey, can we eat here? I go, uh, it's really loud. Um, so I'm an annoying person to be friends with for that reason. Um, but it's self-preservation. You know, it's like, oh, if I go to this party tonight, ah, ah, I'm not gonna be able to work tomorrow. Mm. So it's, it's, I mean, those aren't big sacrifices, but there's the, you know, little things that you yeah. keep in mind when you use your voice all day. I mean, they definitely add up, I'm assuming, at the end of the day. I'm so sick of my own voice. <laughs> well, really luckily, am. people think I'm kidding. I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> well, none of us are, luckily, but I can imagine, you know, especially in a booth for six hours. Yeah, I feel like I'd, I'd get exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I did want to ask a, a two more questions before we get into a special thing of VisionCon Live first, but I did want to ask you two more questions. Now, a lot of people watching this show uh, watch it obviously for the amazing guests that we have, but I've noticed that a lot more watch it because they are either aspiring voice actors and actors or are already in the game but just kind of want to know where to go next so yeah. i want to ask you uh the first question is how you tara sands household name as i mentioned deal with rejection now, like i always say rejection is you know it's in life no matter how you look at it but if there was ever an industry that i would argue rejection is most prevalent it would definitely be your industry so kind of how do you Kind of deal with rejection, does it get any easier? Or if it doesn't, is there any tips you can give the folks watching at home? I will say it gets easier because you're auditioning so much more. So you can forget about, I mean, the best jobs are the one where I get the job and I don't even remember auditioning sure. for it. 
So in that way, it's like a numbers game, you know, and you're like, all right, I, I, you know, you hopefully just forget about the audition. And so you don't feel the rejection. It was just part of your day. Like auditions are part of my work that I just don't get paid for. It's, I feel like the audition itself is a job. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I didn't get rejected from the, you know, from, I had the job of auditioning. Um, and I think over time that does get easier. You know, I'm, I've had conversations with friends who are like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to work again. And I go, well, it would be really weird if you never worked again. Like, you're going to work again. Um, you know, these are established people that, you know, we all have dry spells. We all have times when we're so busy, we can't get the work done. Um, it's, it, it's, there's ebbs and flows. And, and my advice is just like, stick with it. And the rejection, I, don't, I, don't, I won't say it becomes less and less because as you get more auditions, the more rejection you actually have. That's how it goes. But, but you learn not to think about it um, and not let it sit with you. I, I told the story too, like with Hunter Hunter, there's very few auditions where I do think about them after. And I remember auditioning for Gon and Kilua in Hunter and I didn't get it. And I remember thinking, oh, that's a, that's a bummer. And then I got Biscuit and I didn't audition for that. That was because I oh, think wow. uh, they, well, but what they do is sometimes they'll send previous examples of your work as the audition. Okay. So we don't even know when we're auditioning a lot of the time. Um, but then when I got that part, I thought, oh, okay, see, it all worked out. You know, like it worked out. I got the role I was supposed to get. Yeah, it's a bummer I didn't get those, but the right people got those roles. Mm -hmm. And I got the role I was supposed to get. Yeah. And I still got to be part of the show. So sometimes there's just something else at play, you know? There's maybe, you know, maybe I did that audition and she thought, oh, you know what, Tara's not perfect for this, but let me keep her in mind mm -hmm. for this other thing. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, it all worked out. That's a really altruistic way to look at that. I love that. Well, yeah, I mean, again, sometimes you don't get to work on. There's plenty of shows I haven't gotten to work on. But in that case, it wouldn't have been worth dwelling on the rejection because there was something better for me, you know? I, I, I mean, I personally love that outlook for it. And uh, I'm curious, the next question, what your outlook is, uh, in similar vein, people watching the show, either in the industry or looking to get in the industry, so you, as a hollowed name, what tips would you give aspiring voice actors and actors, kind of, you know, just kind of trying to get in the game and, you know, be successful? I mean, my advice is going to be probably similar to everyone else's, sorry. Um, but, you know, take acting classes, take voice classes, take improv classes. I mean, be ready so that once you're, you're in that booth, you can say yes to everything they need. Um, that was like that first day at Pokemon when they said, can you do this voice? I had no idea if I could, sure. but I knew that I had trained and that I was ready. So when it happened, I was like, sure, I can do that. And I'll figure out a way to make it work. Um, so you need that confidence once you get, once you do get in the booth. Um, you know, all, obviously all that training being just a, a great person to work with, like being easy to work with, being, you know, taking direction well, uh, giving them options to work with. If, you know, if you, if you set a line one way, have a, a second way to say it ready to go. Um, so many times I'll be like, do a different version of that. And people will do the same thing. So just, and I think that's where improv training really comes in. Um, and you know, it's a networking game and I hate that part of it, but obviously learning that side of it and it is again, the same advice a lot of people would give. Uh, I always send people, uh, to like, you know, Steve Bloom's site on Facebook, Bloom Box, and read Tara Platt and Yuri Lowenthal's book and D. Bradley Baker's website. Like these people have said it all much better than I have. So I definitely would go to their sites and books for, for better advice. But <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys were taking notes because now you have all the skills necessary to be. <laughs> The next Tara yeah, Sands. Totally work. <laughs> well, there, lastly, while we get this uh, special thing set up, I did want to ask one more question. Uh, you know, throughout the years, you've count, voiced countless characters, but were there any of them that have kind of just kind of stuck with you throughout the years and just, you know, at the end of the day, you gladly kind of hang your hat on? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really liked, they're not all anime necessarily, but again to go back to Anna from Shaman King I did really enjoy that um and I felt like we did some good work on that show and I did a show called Generator Rex for uh Cartoon Network that was the guys who do like Ben 10 and 
that was another show. I, I, uh, I was in the room with just some legends and I was scared to death and, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I, I got through it. <laughs> you know, some, there's some jobs you're like, let me just not get fired. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter what level you're at. I've spoken to, to people who are working circles around me and they still feel that way. So some of those jobs were just jobs that I was glad I got to keep the job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not a great way of looking at it, but um, yeah, so those two stand out to me, um, but I, you know, everyone, ha Philia from Slayers, I, I have fond memories of recording and being part of, and you know, and so, it, you know, it's hard too with anime because you don't get to work with your counterpart, you know, we become actors to interact, and this is one aspect of the business where we really don't get to do that, which is such a shame um so when it when it works and when you watch a scene back and it sounds like you're in the same place that's a big accomplishment it doesn't always work there's plenty of places where it sounds like you are in two different scenes uh which is unfortunate but when it works it's magical <laughs> it's magical i did that i did that well ladies and gentlemen I got a special thing for you guys because like we've talked about you guys have all learned or already knew that tara sands Accomplished actress, voice actress, narrator. What if I told you? Also, an accomplished craftsperson. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen now, guys, and you're more than welcome to explain everything, Tara, but I wanna know all about your <laughs> Etsy store, where the name came from, and kind of how your processes is while I bring up the da, 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 da. wait, one participant mission. I'm so impressed with this. What's gonna oh. happen here? All right, oh, oh, no, oh. Can you, uh, you guys can see my screen all right? All right. All right. Can oh, we all see that? Yeah. yeah nice. Excellent. Um, so this was an accident. I accidentally started a jewelry company. <laughs> oh, there's a bonus round. Um, so I uh, <laughs> trying to think of the right way to start this. So I was just making jewelry for like my friends and family, and I made too much, um, and just like regular stuff, like you know, like this kind of nonsense. Uh, and then a fan said, hey, why don't you make some Pokemon stuff? So I got some Pokemon beads, like that one there, and I uh, started making that. And then uh, I have some friends who are part of Critical Role, and Sam Regal said, why don't you make some jewelry with dice if you're gonna make jewelry? And I said, okay. So I started making all the, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, and it just kind of took on a, you know, it's a life of its own. And then we started, you know, uh, some of the other Pokemon cast members, you see those Pokemon cards. Um, we started doing a, da, 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 what was, what, oh, the, we, the, we did it for Christmas. We did like a three pack of our signatures and then people dug it. So I'm like, all right, we'll keep it up there. Um, and that's sort of how it started. <laughs> it's a weird hobby. And I don't think I ever expected to be making jewelry. <laughs> A weird hobby that's definitely gotten a life of its own. And uh, speaking of that, everybody watching live here on Facebook right now, if you look into the live chat, the wind beneath my sails, Marissa Pence, has put a bunch of links into the live chat. Along oh, amazing. This and you know what? I screwed it up, and now you don't even need to use the code to get the discount. It just is automatic for anybody. You don't even need that code. <laughs> I did it wrong. But that's even better. <laughs> well, Everyone gets a discount. You don't I have mean, to We'll go ahead and give you just the credit for that because, ladies and gentlemen, as she mentioned, a special <laughs> VisionCon Live offer is that for a limited time, all items on her store, at least the majority of them, will be discounted. So go ahead and check them out. The link is in the live chat if you're watching this live or if you're watching this later on YouTube. It's going to, all these links are going to be down in the description below, which segues my way perfectly. I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick. All right. What's going on, guys? Um, into, ladies and gentlemen, this is your last chance. If you haven't already, message VisionCon directly or put in the live chat anything you want to say to Tara Sands or ask, because ladies and gentlemen, we're in the plug zone. Tara Sands, now is your opportunity to plug, promote, advertise, whatever verb you want to use, anything you want. Let's try. No, I'm just kidding. Right. No. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with LaCroix. Uh, no, just uh, thanks for, I don't, I don't know, I feel weird plugging. Uh, but thank you, and thank you for showing my site and everything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, 
my plugs are basically just follow me on, on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. I love doing giveaways and, and that's probably my favorite thing to do. So follow me there so that you can get free stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working on, I'm, I'm trying to think, what am I working on? Oh, some Crunchyroll shows. What am I, Rent a Girlfriend? Yeah. Uh, God of High School. The names are so crazy. At least those are shorter names than a lot of the Crunchyroll shows, though. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> is. I mean, I was thinking, like, like, how many words do they can they fit in a title? Uh, no, so those have been really fun to work on. Uh, really? And I got to actually do a scene with uh, Veronica Taylor. We played cousins in God of High School, so it was fun to play off of her. She had recorded before me, so I got to do that, which was oh, really yeah. That's yeah. so exciting. It's and, like uh, a reunion without getting to see her, so it's sort of anticlimactic, but. Well, I mean, if you guys haven't checked out both those animes, especially in my personal opinion, Rent a Girlfriend, you know, I originally when I heard about Rent a Girlfriend, you know, just by the name alone, I was like, eh, maybe not for me, but I gave it a shot. And I'm really glad I did. It's actually surprisingly, uh, you know, d depth or it has a lot of depth to it, a lot more than just, you know, renting a girlfriend. So go yeah. ahead and check both of those out. And for, like I said, if you're watching this live, all those links are going to be in the live chat or if you're watching this later on YouTube, down in the description below. With that said, we're out of the plug zone and right into viewers' comments and questions. So, like I usually do, guys, going to try to even it out in between both the messenger and the live chat. And obviously, as always, went beneath my sales, Marissa Pence, went ahead and compiled a lot of them. So let me just pull those up real quick. You're so good at this, by the way. I'm sorry? You're very good at this. Oh, no, I heard you. I just wanted to hear you say it again. No, I mean, I, I used to host something, and I am always impressed when I get to work with a good host. So thank you for making this very easy. I'm going to read these before I start crying. But <laughs> all right, so Chris wrote in and wanted to know, hey, Tara, what was it like voicing in, and I'm probably going to butcher this, uh, Anohana? Anohana. Ah, nailed it. Oh. Well, Chris, I'm sorry if you cried a lot during that movie. And if you didn't cry, you're heartless. And you <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kidding. Um, that was a... Uh, Patrick Seitz directed that and gave me that role. Um, and I don't want to give too much away about it, uh, but I will say that it's a tearjerker and I don't play, the character I play does some, as a, is a young boy who is, does some not so nice things. Um, so while his role is very important to the story, I felt kind of crummy having to say some, some bad things, but uh, Patrick's a really good director. Um, and made that a, re a really cool experience. But again, I'm, I'm, I apologize for making you all weep. Actually, the promotion for that, they uh, made little packets of Anohana tissues because they knew really? how much people were gonna cry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that's just genius promotion. And <laughs> yeah, no, it was, a it was a really well done dub. So I give credit to Patrick for that. I'm actually gonna jump to the messenger because you said something interesting that made me think of another question uh, from Colin who wrote in and wanted to know, out of all the characters you've done, some characters you've voiced aren't so nice. Is that yeah. hard to do? Well, I, I'd say one of the hardest ones was that uh, remake of uh, uh, Sailor Moon Super, uh, I gosh, I confuse all the names, but I played Queen Bodion, who was just pure evil. I mean, she <laughs> would lock kids in caskets and uh, it was terrible. There, and, they asked me in an inter interview once, I think it was the Viz interview, and they were like, did you find any redeeming qualities in her? And I said, you know, for that one, no, I, I did not. There was, she was pure evil. Like, I'm sure she has some backstory where she was tortured as a kid that justifies that. Sure. You try to find that, but uh, I remember getting in my car, we did that at Studiopolis after that session, and just being like, ugh, ugh, ugh I feel gross. Um, which I, you know, sometimes it's fun to be evil. Like, you know, people have asked me, like, on Pokemon, who would you want to play? I'm like, oh, I would love to play, like, Jesse and James, like, to be the bad guy. You know, they're funny bad guys. Queen Badion or Badiane, some people say it. Uh, there was nothing funny about her. <laughs> um, it was, so, yeah, that, that was, I mean, again, it was a good experience because, I, you know, you're there to serve a purpose to the rest of the story. So, in that way, I'm happy with the work I did, but in terms of like going home that night, I felt like <laughs> <laughs> wasn't wasn't as easy. But no, I was like, oh god, I should have. Who do I apologize to? <laughs> That's so cute. Well, plenty of people have been saying that they love your artwork and your beadwork. 
oh, which thank uh, you, I can attest to as well. Um, okay, and then Aaron wrote in and wanted to know, is there any favorite Digimon memories you had voice in uh, Carrie in recent projects? Uh, I mean, there, <laughs> there was a weird shower scene with... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and again, it goes back to like doing the, I love her, you know, relationship with her brother, obviously, because that, that was a highlight for me. I wish there had been more TK stuff, um, or Ty stuff, sorry, I'm confusing all them, um, relationship stuff between those guys. Um, so those were great, mem I, and I love the friendships in that show. I just, to me, like all their interactions are so much fun. Like, it's fun to be like, oh no, look out and do all the fighting stuff and when there's a lot of like reactions to wind blowing and things attacking and that stuff's great but the the fun stuff is the dialogue and sometimes we get to rewrite stuff to make it fit and then find some you know you once you're in the booth you can find something that works better or um and mostly those have been directed by Susie Goldish and and Ryan Johnston I don't it's not Johnson it's Johnston uh, I don't want to say it wrong um and I, those are like two of my favorite directors to work with so again, it's like, it's a lot about the actual experience itself more than the project you're working on, which is, sounds strange, but for us, that's, that's sort of how it works. Sure. sure. Okay. Well, I do have a, a double header from Daniel. And uh, this one, so he asked, uh, do you think Richie will be back on Pokemon Journeys? If so, will you be able to voice him? And then he also asked, why didn't you get to voice Bulbasaur in Pokemon Journeys? Oh, that's a good question. So the way that it worked is, you know, so I, I moved and the cast changed and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know if Richie's coming back. We are always, we know probably, you guys, if you're watching the Japanese version, you probably know before I do if any of my characters are coming back. I would think I would play Richie if he came back because I, what, you know, obviously they didn't want, you know, uh, people, someone else is playing Bulbasaur now and the idea was never to take back any, to take away something from someone who's been playing that role. Sure. Um, but if like a character like Richie came back, I know there is, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but I know that like certain roles like Nurse Joy, and there's, there are people who have come back if that role hasn't been claimed, kind of. Sure. So my guess would be I would get to do it if he came back. Fingers crossed he comes back, because that really was one of my, my favorite, favorite characters to play. I love that relationship with Ash. So, and I'd love to see what Richie's doing now. I mean, he's not going to be the age he should be because <laughs> time is frozen, but I mean, we'll see. How, how old would Ash be at this point? 80. 80. And I don't, uh, older than he is. <laughs> it's no, like no. Bart Simpson syndrome. Yeah, yeah, a whole different show. All right, so Jennifer uh, message mission on directly and wanted to say, hi, Tara. I loved the, what, what is the? Okay, no, she misspelled uh, Kool-Aid. Uh, the Kool-Aid talk in the pre-show. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys haven't, you know, maybe tune into the pre-show next time. You know what we're talking about. But she did want to know, were there any tips that you have about getting into show business? We kind of touched in that, a little bit in that directly. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, let me add on to your question, Jennifer. Are there any tips to get into showbiz uh, depending on your living situation, as in maybe... Do you need to live in like one of the coasts in order to really prosper in, let's say, voice acting, or do you think the industry has kind of evolved to a point where you can at least get started? Anyway? Yeah. When I started, absolutely, you had to live there. It, it is a different game now. I it, that's why I hate giving advice because the way I got started was so different because I lived, you know, right near New York City, so I had a, I had an advantage. Um, but now. I, there's a there's so many ways that you could be working there's you know i say not to not to sell yourself short because there's certain ways of working that undercut the industry like you don't want to work for too little because it kind of then messes up the whole chain sure. because we're all working together now you know we're auditioning against people in every city at this point um so there's so much more opportunity to get started i and it sounds like such a cop-out, but I'm like, Google how to become a voice actor and read everything. You have to want this so, so badly that you, if you're not staying up every night and reading as much information as you can get and then figuring out what works, you know, like there's going to be conflicting information you're going to get. And, and that's okay because you're going to figure out like, okay, what keeps popping up? What are the themes here? Um, and then I, I'd say take classes, 
the amazing thing is you can take classes online now. You used to have to live in the same city as these amazing uh, voice coaches. And so many people so many who are working in this industry teach classes. Um, study with them. Study with people. Don't study with people who haven't worked in a while. Um, that's, that's my big advice if you're trying to get in. Work with people who are, you know, it might take you a while to get off their wait list to get the coaching session. That's worth it because their advice is, is going to be uh, current and um, it, it's going to be very useful. And I, I know that stuff costs money. So I'd say, you know, save your money and do one great class as opposed to a, a, a ton of crappy classes. Or, um, you know, make sure, you know, take acting classes at your local community college, do things, you know, get together with a bunch of friends and do improv and read improv books, things that don't cost you a ton of money. Uh, I, I never want people to go broke getting into this. That's one of my fears is that like we tell them all this stuff to do, go buy this equipment and get the basics done first. And then if you want to invest in your career, that's great, you know, at that point. Yeah, yeah. Solid advice. Yeah. Well, we have time for two more questions, guys. Uh, I did want to read one though. Uh, Sarah Zimmer wrote in and wanted to tell you, Tara, Sarah, we you. love you. You and Tommy were the era of True Cartoon Network. Oh, thank you. I, that was, that officially was my favorite job of all time. Uh, that was, it was, it was a moment in time for us. It really was special. Uh, you know, we're still friends. The, I talked to the crew, you know, people, the writers, we're still in touch on Facebook and stuff. Uh, but working on that show, you know, you asked me before, like, did I bring myself to characters? Well, I got to be myself on that show in so many ways. You know, there was some stuff that was obviously scripted, yeah. the sketches and stuff, but I got to interact with Charles Barkley and be silly. And, you know, when we did interviews, I got to just talk to them as myself and ask them the questions I wanted to know the answers to. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously, you know, what you saw in that show was pretty much me. Uh, in all my annoying glory. So, thank you. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. I that it happy memories of that. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, what, a couple more questions we've got. We got and bo forgive me. I'm gonna probably butcher your name. Is it a, a Garen or Charon? Uh, if you wanted to know, uh, Tara, do you have a favorite Pokemon? Well, everyone would be mad if I didn't say Bulbasaur. So I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, the truth is, is again, like I said earlier, Bulbasaur is my favorite because I feel like I got, with saying one word, I got to run the gamut of emotions. Um, and after that, when I had words, it was even easier to be an actor. Uh, I, I thought it was really cool that, um, with all the Pokemon, but Bulbasaur specifically for me, I love that they don't say words because then a kid can interpret what they're saying however they want, which I think is really cool. Um, so yeah, so in terms of like characters, Pokemon, I'd say Bulbasaur, but listen, I think Eevee's really cute. Like if I had to hang out with a Pokemon all day, I'd be like, Eevee, come hang out. Oh, yeah. um, so I do like other Pokemon. I'm not biased like oh, that, sure. but. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the ones touch your heart more than others. I get that. All right, and then let me scroll up. Got time for one more. I do say on a personal note, it's so heartwarming to know that you're still in contact with all of them after all this time. <laughs> all right, okay, last question. Not the jerks, just the nice people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping touch with the jerks. Of course not, of course not. Time for that. But, uh, okay, so Allison wrote in and wanted to know, aside from voice acting and acting, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I'm addicted to jigsaw puzzles and crossword puzzles. Really? Like in a bad way, like it takes up too much of my time. It's, yeah. Is there any, anything about them that just kind of, you know, interests you? You know what I do like about them? And this kind of yeah. goes back to, I guess, what I do for work. Sure. Like when, I, when I, I'm like a cog in the wheel of whatever I'm doing, like, you know, I, I, if I do an hour or two on a show, I'm just a little tiny piece of that. I don't necessarily see the finished product. I'm not always happy with what I did on it. I'm like, oh, I wish I could redo that line. Or, and even an audiobook, it's so long. And but I'm not the writer of it. Like, there's something about completing a puzzle. <laughs> like, even and that's I think the same fulfillment I get from making jewelry. Like, I'm in control with that. Like, I can redo it if I don't like it. A puzzle, there there is an answer or a, a final piece, and I like the completion of that. 
And in acting, you don't always get that. You know, if you're doing theater, it's great because you can change it up every night and, but you always want to do something, you know, you, you rarely feel like you had a perfect performance. Um, or at least I don't, but, uh, you never always, you never feel like you're done when you're an actor. Like there's always more to more to do. So I love things that have a beginning and end. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I've never really looked at puzzles that way, but I mean, you're absolutely right. That's insane. It's so satisfying. Like when we put that final piece in a jigsaw puzzle, ah, oh, I can sleep. So I can sleep finally. <laughs> well, yeah, I do, I do crossword puzzles every night before bed. It just like, to me, it's like a very, it's like a way to end the day. And again, like there's an answer. I love that there's a finished product. Very cathartic, you'd say? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm a big dork. Like that's where my dorkiness is. It's like board games and stuff like that. I'm not, you know, we all have our, our dorky side, so. Well, sure, I mean, yeah, you're in very good company when it comes to that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of that, that's all the time we got today. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 29 of VisionCon Live. Now before we wrap things up, Tara Sands, any final thoughts to leave us on? No, just thank you guys. This was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Well, make thank sure you guys it. check out the links down below, especially the website to the Etsy page. For a limited time, there will be a discount in all her amazing products. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 29 of Vision Con Live. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Of course, my name's Zach Wilson, but much more importantly, this has been my <laughs> special guest, Tara Sands. Mm -hmm. Make sure to check out the links below. And always remember, guys, life's better when you have friends to share it with.